so in this video we're going to be talking about protectionism. Now, what is protectionism? Protectionist policies are essentially barriers to trade. They are ways of countries sort of isolating themselves so they don't have to trade. They are the antichrist of the uh, World Trade Organization. Now, there are several different types of protectionist policies, including an increase in regulations in terms of import-export regulations. But in this video, I'm going to be looking at three. Tariffs, quotas and subsidies. So, let's start with the first one, tariffs. Now, what are tariffs? Tariffs are specific taxes which are applied onto imported goods. So, why do we apply taxes to imported goods besides the reason of increasing tax revenue? Well, we make these cheap imports expensive. And by making them expensive, we allow our domestic firms, which have high costs, to compete with them. And when they can compete, then you don't need so many um, imports because you can just produce it domestically. So you reduce the amount of imports and hence is a barrier to trade. Now we have a diagram when it comes to looking at um, tariffs. I'm not sure if you can see the diagram, but I'm just going to go through it. Along the y-axis you have price, along the x-axis you have quantity, and then the red lines just are domestic supply, domestic demand. Now in terms of neoclassical economics, without free trade, just looking at an economy as itself, if what, where would the economy produce? It would produce here at P1, where supply equals demand, with this is in a free market um, situation, and quantity 1. Then what happens is we introduce different countries and specialization and free market. And what happens when we have a free market? Well, world price is here, right below here, WP2. And it goes all the way here, and it's actually perfectly uh, elastic. Now the reason why it's perfectly elastic is because uh, it's the world, you have a lot of resources, <coughs> so you can quickly produce it so supply is perfectly elastic. Now when this happens, and if we just work at this level by importing this particular good, your quantity supply uh, of from the domestic, domestically you'll produce only this much you'll only produce domestically because the price is so low and many suppliers can't supply at this price. But demand will be this big because there's low price and everybody wants it. So to fit this gap in the middle, to fit the shortage, we have the imports. Now, let's say we add a tariff. Because obviously this is a tariff diagram. Price goes all the way up here. Still not as high as the neoclassical red part because obviously if it was higher than that then why would we trade and why would we use tariffs just rather than work as an isolated economy. So look at the purple line. Again supply is elastic and this is S3 with the tariff and it goes all the way here. Now quantity supply is now um, uh, by the domestic firm increased because quantity supplied by the world would have fallen. You'll see that in a minute. So we're working here with demand and supply because now there's less of a shortage because it's a higher price so more domestic um, suppliers can supply and demand is obviously contracted because the price is higher. There's a smaller shortage hence imports have now fallen to this. Now the distance between the two world price before the tariff, world price after the tariff between the new um, import distance over here as you can see this is the tax revenue, this blue circle here. This is all the tax that the government collect by the tariff. Over here through the demand, world supply before the tariff, and then the world supply, and, and, uh, and then um, the quantity demanded three, so of the world uh, price of the tariff. This triangle here basically to the right of the tax is the welfare loss because obviously price has gone up, consumer welfare has gone down. And then you have on the left side, of um, the tax, this, uh, this triangle here, is a producer surplus. Price has gone up, so we have an increase in producer surplus. Now, it's a bit of a complicated diagram. I suggest you look at a textbook uh, to help you with that because my video is not very clear um, from it, the diagram explanation. 
So now the second thing is quotas. Now what are quotas? They are numerical values um, which dictate the amount of imports that can come into a country. So I might say this year only 5 million pairs of shoes can be imported. So what happens? You have less supply of shoes because usually it might be 50 billion let's say. That pushes up price. Again, domestic producers can compete, so they produce more and you um, import less. That's basically what quotas do. Subsidies, you look at your high cost domestic firms, you give them subsidies, you give them money. This cuts some of their costs, so their prices fall and they produce, um, I'm sorry, their prices fall and then they can compete with the imports so you don't need to import as much because people just go to domestic buyers because their price is just as cheap as imports well in theory now, there are seven reasons, just like the seven days of the week why we should um, use protectionist policies and you'll find that the reasons against using protectionist policies make up the reasons for having the world trade so, what are the reasons for having protectionist policies in countries. Well, the first is it protects domestic employment. So what that means is that in an economy, if you rely on imports, then you don't produce something in your country. More people are left unemployed, and obviously this is not good for the economy, can set us into a recession, it's not good for anyone, and eventually imports will go down because consumption has gone down. So you need a bit of protections policies to make sure that there's still manufacturing productivity is happening, particularly in service sector um, developed countries. So you can look at the Clark Fisher model for um, um, how different countries develop and what sectors they go into. The second is the protection of infant industry. Now what this means is that if you have an industry which has just started up, it's a high cost, high R&D, you don't want to import things from that industry from a different country because this is a high cost thing, you need to protect it and once like a, once it's sort of like become an adult to carry on the metaphor and it can carry out things and you can open the market. The problem is if you start protecting at the young, young age, it's used to having lack of competition and you will basically never ever open up the doors to trade with other countries because once you do open up the trade, you'll find that actually you've been protecting something that was probably not as efficient as the other firms which have been competing on a larger scale. Third is price, um, not price, I'm dumping it's called. Now this is a bit like predatory pricing when we looked at unit three. Now what it is is that many, many f external firms like in China and so on, they will use really low prices to gain market share in other countries and it's also used by transnational corporation to get market share and so it's very uncompetitive and so by doing protectionism you're preventing sort of price dumping to happen. Think of it like predatory pricing, that's how I remember it. The next is a senile industry. This basically means if you have an industry which is quite old and it's been there and maybe it doesn't have the amount of technology that other countries in this industry may have, it can't compete with them so you need to protect it until it becomes efficient and it gets up from the what's it called, from rock bottom, once it gets up from the rock bottom and it gets the technology and it starts booming again, then it can compete with overseas competition and can open the doors again. So protectionist policy is used to save that, because if you didn't have protectionist policy, it would basically die. Um, the next one is balance of payments. Well, if you look at the countries like the UK and US, they're net importers, they import so much, but they export hardly anything. And one of the macroeconomic goals is a good, steady, stable balance of payments. So in order to improve our balance of payments, we may do protectionist policies to encourage exports, but mainly to reduce our reliance on imports. Political reasons. So some countries, they may not be treating their people well, human rights issues, etc, etc. So by putting these protections policies, you're kind of making a point that we're, going, we're not going to trade with you. We're going to put barriers to trade up um, because we're not happy until you change your political act. So it could be for political reasons. And the last, the seventh reason is national security. You do not want to be relying for absolutely everything on other countries because in an emergency, if you have a war or anything like that, there's a big problem because what do you do? You're reliant all your life on other countries and now suddenly in a war they can provide for your people and you can't. So that's another reason for having protectionist policies to protect certain industry like the agriculture sector. Anyway, thank you for watching. Please visit my blog.